All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house. And today we're going to do some knife anatomy. Basically, we're going to analyze uh, the part of a knife. Uh, so let's start with the blade. Okay, so blade is uh, has many, many parts. It's not just like a blade. I mean, yes, it is. But uh, let's start from the uh, point uh, that or called also tip. Uh, this is, you know, pretty important because this is going to determine the, the use of the knife. Um, so, you know, d based on the shape of the, the tip of, or the point, you know, you're going to be able to slice, to slash, to stab, to shred, you know, it, it depends on the purpose of, uh, of your task. Uh, the spine also uh, or sometimes called like back is this part over here. And it's, you know, pretty thick. It's the thickest, heaviest, um, uh, length of the blade and the, as a function to to support the actual blade so you know of course the thicker this part is and the stronger the, the knife is going to be uh, sometimes you know you can refer to this part as also like flat and um, you know these are parallel uh, on, on both sides and this one extends down to this area here all right which is called the ricasso okay um, which you know sits basically uh, between the bolster which is maybe like be uh, better visible over here so this chunk over here is called bolster uh, sometimes you have like rear bolsters like at the end of the handle um, so the ricasso is that area which sits like around this uh, uh, part over here of the blade um, then you have like the grind so the grind is like this part over here and can be hollow like in this case in fact you see like reflection is just like you see it's just there's a curve all right um, for example like in um, uh, let's see another one like this one over here it's just flat all right so it's a flat grind whereas the other one is just the it's just a hollow grind so it has like a curvature um, you have uh, you know different uh, tips for example or point so this is like a drop point this is like a spear point for example so a drop point means that the point is um, you know lower than this height and like for example spear point means when you know usually it was referred when you when you had like a double edged um, blade but now it's just when the you know the the, the blade is kind of like symmetric like in in this um, in this one so uh, you know the grind also has like a termination uh, grind which is ending right here at the ricasso as you see as you can see um, also this is the plunge grind you know because the grind plunges into like the the beefy part uh, of the blade and also has a radius like you can see in this case pretty clearly um, which uh, determines you know the actual transition between the grind and uh, you know the grind line over here and leads you know to the uh, spine near to the to the tip to the to the point uh, so also some uh, like other pretty characteristic features are of a blade are the choil so the choil can be like um, can have like a, a sharpening function all right so or like um, because you know it's considered you know where the cutting edge starts which you know uh, starts right over here in this in this case so you know right over here you have the choil sharpening choil in this case the sharpening choil is going to be also serving as a finger choil because as you can see look at this you can just choke it up and use it as um, you know a, an area to place your finger and just uh, uh, you know gain more precision. So uh, the sharpening choil has a purpose to define like a location where you actually are gonna start sharpening the edge of your knife. Um, also, like in this blade, actually we can see like the swedge, this part over here. Uh, so this, you know, the purpose of a swedge is uh, actually to reduce the cross-sectional area over here, like as you can see, at uh, like in this area, without you know sacrificing too much um, thickness, you know, at the point. Uh, you see, so you reduce weight. You have this um, area here. You can see better probably in this 
one over here. Okay, so swedge comes down but doesn't sacrifice, you know, thickness at the tip. So it's a uh, it's pretty pretty functional uh, um, feature of of the blade. Uh, also, like for example, many blades they have like a belly, like in this case, right over here. Uh, you know, it's like the, the curved uh, arc of the main blade. Sometimes you have uh, like serration over here, which are like tooth, like teeth. Um, I don't have any serrated blade over here to show you, but you, you know what I'm talking about. It's like basically something like this, not, but over here. Um, and, um, you know, also, you can have top serrations, you know, in some blade, like, like uh, up uh, up over here. And um, yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, there are also some other um, shape, okay? So, for example, uh, you have drop point over here, you know, you have like a clip point, you have a tanto blade over here. And, um, you know, Tanto, it's, uh, it has become pretty popular because, um, you know, uh, you have, you see, like this peculiar shape. And, um, you know, you have a tip grind over here, you know, and uh, you have this other grind over here. It can be uh, like, for example, in this case, the grind over the tip is just flat whereas over here is hollow. So this will um, constitute like a, a compound grind, all right? Uh, also the, uh, you know, this line over here, right over here, this one, it's called the yokote or the dividing line because, you know, it's gonna divide the main grind by the tip, uh, from the tip grind. Also in the umnamzan, we can check something very interesting like this tip over here this is a, a glass breaker or skull crasher or even also sometimes called a talon like uh, you know the, it's uh, in italian tallone like heel or persuader and you know it can serve as uh, you know it can have many many functions of course um, something also like very interesting we can check in the snafu is this fuller over here or sometimes uh, referred uh, as cannelure uh, because ch it's channeling it's like a channel um, you know this uh, is its purpose is like to reduce uh, the central weight I mean the, the weight uh, at this thick uh, area you know of the spine but it doesn't sacrifice any strength uh, you know sometimes this is referred as the uh, blood groove but uh, actually it's like kind of incorrect because the fuller is named because um, it's named after the like a special hammer and anvil tool set which is called like a fuller uh, you know blacksmiths are using this to produce this very groove uh, um, on the blade um, also, we have, uh, uh, you know, different uh, kind of edges, okay? Uh, so the edge is, uh, um, can be angled uh, in, in different ways. Uh, as you can see, for example, over here, and let's see over here, uh, we have, you know, a slight different edge angle like this is probably like around a like 20 degrees this is going to be like 18 degrees so this is steeper this is a little bit more slicey and also another feature like uh, for example we can compare in like these uh, blades over here is that this has a recurve edge which means this is not flat okay uh, this is a very complex blade there's a it's a complex grind there's a hollow grind here you know flat here a swedge and look at the tip right over here with you know finger choil sharpening choil this is called the jimping which is the area where you actually uh, gain traction um, you know uh, when when you squeeze the blade like this and you know very very prominent and sharp in the snafu over here um, yeah, so basically these are the, the, the main feature of, uh, of a blade. So um, let's check out some feature of the handle. Um, because, you know, the handle is uh, usually uh, hiding or like uh, sporting like the locking mechanism, all right? So there's, uh, there's many different uh, mechanisms for the knives. Uh, for example, we can uh, start from a lockback, 
all right so this is a knife where uh, you know lockbacks is uh, uh, it's pretty famous okay so this is lion steel opera uh, the lock bar is pinned to the scales all right and it's pivoting usually like around the middle uh, of the handle and as a, like a bent spring which is anchored further back in the handle all right so this spring just provides upward pressure right behind the pivot point so when you press you know this guy over here all right as you can see like right over here okay there you go so you press this one you know you there is a spring you uh, you hit the tension of the spring and then you can release the the blade all right also in the closed position uh, you know the lock bar sits like um uh, on a ramp like in the bottom of the tank and that's the the detent you know for for opening and that's a uh, you know it's pretty old and useful and functional uh, kind of lock uh, also um there's uh you know another lock i don't have anything here with me uh like cold steel is uh, doing like a triad lock which is like a kind of like a refined lock back design with a with a um you know there's like a pin like a stop pin inserted and anchored to to the handles and it's you know placed in between the the lock bar and the tank so you know it can take uh, you know pretty serious shock uh, and it's uh, considered to be like pretty pretty sturdy uh, another like pretty common uh, type of lock is the liner lock liner lock probably is the most common uh, lock uh, mechanism in, in blades i think because it's uh, easy to to design it's easy to assemble and it's kind of cheap i think so um you know basic design design of a liner lock is like this one so you have basically like a liner which is uh, sorry which is bent right over here on the inside and creates like a spring effect to engage the back of the blade uh, tang you know when the blade is open uh, michael walker uh, is uh, a guy like pretty famous he uh, basically uh, upgraded this kind of lock doing like uh, introducing like the the stop pin you know this, which is anchor to the to the scales and its purpose is like just to align the blade when open like over here as you can see um and also i think he added uh the detent ball on the on the liner lock which is like that little ball right over here which has the pretty important function to hold the blade in, uh, in the closed position you know providing the snappy action so that's why you refer as a like a strong detent or light detent based on the force needed to deploy the blade because you know that very ball right there sits in a hole uh, drilled into the tank of the blade so you know it also adds some feature uh, some safety features because uh, you don't want to you know your blade to accidentally open uh, in your pocket another like pretty pretty popular uh, lock mechanism is the frame lock uh, frame lock is uh, it's very popular you know uh, especially in you know higher end uh, blades uh, chris reeve invented this invented uh, this kind of lock in fact it's called the uh, reeve integral lock sometimes you can refer to it uh, as as such and uh, it was introduced in 1990 when uh, they release the sebenza and so the concept is basically very similar to the uh, liner lock uh, but i think it's a little bit stronger stronger and and simpler because you know frame itself it's i mean at least on the lock side sometimes you have like a frame lock here and you know something different on the on the presentation side but uh, on the lock side you know it's thicker than a liner lock usually and it's actually part of the whole handle so you just need like a cutout right you know along the axis of the spine right over here and of course you're gonna have like a relief cut something like this which you know creates uh, uh, the space for your uh, uh, 
finger and you're gonna have like another cut over here which is the way that you know remove material over here so they are able to bend the uh, actual lock bar in this position and this one uh, it's able to create uh, like inward pressure like uh, toward like this point right over here so when the blade is open the lock bar just springs inward and engages the rear of the blade tang so that it's going to be locked into place so very very nice um, over time uh, the frame lock received uh, some uh, improvement for example like as you can check in the uh, aluminum van uh, you have an over travel stop uh, this is an invention uh, by Rick Hinderer and um, you know this is uh, basically like a disc which is mounted on these uh, the non-moving part of the frame and uh, you know the lock bar uh, when when you try to extend it like in this way you see the lock bar just hits that disc which is bolted down to this um, part of the handle and prevents uh, the lock bar from being pushed past its resting position you know uh, you know which can quickly like um, lead to, to metal fatigue and uh, poor performance so you can also refer to this as lock bar uh, stabilizer um, another like uh, improvement of the uh, frame lock is uh, let me see where is uh, let's we can use this guy over here it's the uh, implementation of a steel lock bar insert so i've seen only these two frame lock knives and um, especially when you use like a titanium frame lock because titanium is uh, actually softer uh, than uh, than the metal you know that than, than, than steel so over time you know engagement of the of the lock will wear the lock face so some uh, manufacturer like Chris Reeve they just carbidize the lock face so the surface area of the lock bar which is in contact with the tang of the blade so they harden that like with a carbidization process uh, some other companies they prefer just to uh, skip that and introduce like a hardened steel uh insert right over here uh which is uh you know it's replaceable as you can see you have like a screw so you can remove that and uh as like um you know uh, main purpose of reducing the lock stick uh, because you know as we said like titanium is softer uh, than steel so over time it can cause something uh, like referred as galling so it's uh, it's a pretty it's pretty clever uh, invention but it's unsure like who did it so uh, there you go um, another like um, interesting uh, uh, improvement of the uh, on a, on a frame lock it's like the use of a rotor block i don't have any lion steel with the rotor block uh, but um, it's basically like a over travel stop with an extra uh, lock uh, device uh, built in so basically you rotate that and uh, it's gonna be uh, locked so another an extra added safety measure for the <coughs> sorry for the overextension of the lock bar uh, another improvement of the frame lock is like a ceramic ball and lock chris reeve invented this one it's on the inkosi on the umnumzan and on the sabenza 31 it's basically a ceramic detent ball on the inner corner right over here of the lock face and it's in it's both the detent and the interface with the tag of the blade and you're not gonna have any lock stick in this one uh, another feature of the blade like you know it can be the thumb stud right over here uh, where it has a dual purpose so it's a, a thumb stud all right so you deploy the blade like this but also look at this it's a stop pin so very very interesting design uh, this is referred as um, I think uh, um, Hawk and Grant invented uh, this mechanism in fact you see in this case you also have like a couple of uh, uh, rubber gaskets to absorb uh, 
you know, the shock when you flick the blade open. So very, very interesting. Another kind of lock is the Spyderco uh, compression lock. All right. So this is uh, something very, very interesting um, over here. And uh, it's basically like a inverted liner lock. All right. So it's a spider convention. It's on the PM2, PM3 primarily, but also in other knives. And uh, it's using like a, a split liner, right? So it's a liner just cut in half and which, you know, uh, has some tension like towards this side, like inward. And when the blade opens, it's hitting along the spine of the blade. All right. And opens into a place between the tang of the blade and the stop pin right over here. So it makes a you know stronger and then a typical liner lock, but also easier to operate and um, avoids the fact that you're gonna have to disengage the lock, placing your finger in the actual blade path. Like you see in this one liner lock, I have to do this and uh, my finger is in the blade path. Whereas in this one, no, because I'm just gonna pinch here and this is just gonna close. All right, so added safety feature over here. Uh, another kind of lock is the axis lock. So Benchmade is uh, is responsible for this addictive uh, and fun lock because it's like extremely fidgety. Like you at this, you can just, now it's awkward on the camera, but you can, really play um, a lot of time with this guy. And um, so basically how this works, this is, um, you, it's like a, an axis actual right over here. And which, you know, is spring loaded, has two Omega springs right there. So, and just sits right over here. You see, there's a notch right there exactly. And uh, it's, the place for this, as you see, there's a stop pin and the, when the uh, axis lock just release, gets released, boom, boom, it just sits up, preventing the blade to close. So very, very nice, very safe and, uh, and actually super fun. Um, there are also another couple of mechanism like a button lock or also called the plunge lock with a, which I don't have uh, any blade to show you here, but it's, uh, you know, actually used on some automatic knife. You need just to press the button to, to release the blade. And there's like a, a coil spring tension that just fires the blade open. So that's one. Uh, there's also like a collar lock, which is pretty famous uh, from uh, Opinel and you know, it's just like uh, probably the most recognizable uh, of them all because it's very simple. You just twist, uh, you, you lock the blade by twisting the, the, the a ring, like a collar around the handle so that the blade is unable to move. So pretty straightforward. Um, there are also some non-locking folders. For example, uh, this is a friction folder, pretty tiny, but this is the concept. So basically you have like a lever over here, you deploy the blade and just by friction, it's just gonna be held open. So it's it's less safe, I, I mean, and you need to be uh, more careful with these uh, kind of blades. Um, something else, uh, like also non-locking are slip joints. Like, for example, this guy. Uh, slip joints are uh, also spring loaded. All right, there's a spring loaded in the back. Uh, it's pretty simple mechanism. Uh, you know, like you've, you've, you've handled like some Swiss Army knife, of course. And, uh, you know, you have... Um, also like this half stop over here and uh, it which you know adds a little you know some safety because you know you this is nicely you know uh, there's a nice strong spring over here so it's going to be uh, safer to operate and also you know like the spring is going to keep the blade over here but it's not actually locked so locked so um, yeah there you have it so these were some of the blade shape and some of the locking mechanism of uh, on some folding knives and hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching and stay tuned